Episode 7 of the show, titled The Viewing, was something different when compared to the rest of the anthology. A collector called Lionel was one of the richest people on the planet, and he invited four individuals over to his home, in which it was quite literally like no other. And we as the audience were visitors too. This episode was on the other end of the scale when it came to the execution from a stylistic point of view, and also in terms of the horror element. So with that, I thought I'd recap break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Cabinet of Curiosities Episode 7 The Viewing Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The seventh episode of the show was something that stood out for a number of different reasons. I feel we as the audience got to experience what the episode was all about, being sucked into something that was being viewed and having a hold on us like nothing else. The art of conversation, the set design, the lighting, the pacing, and the score in the background. This episode of the anthology proved to be the very thing that the show was talking about, until it transformed into the monster at the end. Even the voice at the start with the shot of the invitation. It was done in a way as though that was our invitation to be a fifth member. Lionel was a person who was extremely wealthy and he was called what one would describe as a collector, whether that be art, rare finds that nobody had ever had or heard of, or even people, in the sense that he would find somebody that he liked that offered something and he would pay for exclusivity, hence when he said it costs a lot of money getting this rich. He spends a lot so he's able to maintain the standard, image, and appearance that he held. We had four of the leading people in their industries being invited to the Sandpiper House, which was an architectural masterpiece. We had Charlotte who was a leader in the scientific field, Targ with his psychic expertise, Guy in being one of the finest novelists that was out there, and Randall who was a key contributor to the success of a lot of music in the charts because of his involvement. Whilst I was constantly expecting there to be a deeper meaning behind what was going on due to the pacing of the episode and the way that there was so much focus and attention on the conversation, I don't feel as though there was much meaning behind what we were witnessing, other than the imitation of what we saw unfold. We saw the four of them enter the room and the shots were so nice on the eye. The space that we had then filled by them walking in and surrounding the sofa. They were greeted by their favourite drinks and then once Lionel came in, things started to gradually unfold. We saw the four of them get to know each other along with hearing about Lionel and Dr. Zara. As the audience, I feel we were led to believe that the creators wanted us to think that something sinister was going to occur between Lionel and the visitors, but that was never the case, unless the ending was planned by Lionel, which I just don't think is the case. We saw different levels of toxins enter the guests' bodies as they worked their way through different substances, which was essentially done to lower the guests' guard, allow them to have an open mind, and let them experience what Lionel wanted them to see in what he would describe as one of the most purest of ways. Whilst they were all on the same level from a mental standpoint, which is what we saw occur, Randall seemed to be the most susceptible to Lionel's persuasion due to the fact that he was trying to kick his smoking habit, and one would imagine a drinking habit due to the fact that he had a tea in front of him and was reluctant to drink the aged beverage in front of him too. Lionel was putting on a show to woo them, make them feel special, lure them into a sense of security so they'd essentially be ready for what he wanted them to see. We witnessed him mention that they were specifically hand-chosen to lay their eyes upon what he wanted them to see. This was done because he had four individuals that were at the top of their game across four very different industries, such as art and science, and could each provide a different opinion from a different area of the brain to try and work out what it was. The divisive opinions were something that were made apparent in small conversations that they had when they were in the van when they spoke of star signs right at the beginning of the episode. They each contained different opinions and we even saw Hector mention how Lionel didn't want any of them speaking. I feel this was due to the different opinions and he didn't want anybody's mind to be filled with an opinion other than theirs, which could potentially lead them to stray from their original thoughts, as it would mess with why he chose them. When they were all ready, we saw them enter the room where what Lionel had collected was being contained, and we saw each of them have a reaction to the unknown object. They were instantly drawn into its presence, other than Guy, who didn't care in the slightest at first. But it was Randall's blowing of smoke that caused it to react, something it hadn't done in all previous tests. An alien creature hatched from the rock, and it had a hold on every individual in the room, to the point where Targ and Guy's face melted off, along with Dr. Zara. It was this that happened which then caused the hold to break and it ultimately allowed Charlotte and Randall to be able to break free and drive away. Lionel was still under the hold that it had and it was mesmerized by what it was seeing and was essentially numb and couldn't move. 
Eventually, the creature used Lionel's body as a host, to which we heard help me from the inside of it, showing us that the Collector had become collected. Hector tried his best to stop it, but we saw him succumb to the electricity bolts that the alien emitted. The final thing we saw was of the creature heading into the sewers and emerging at a different location, where it looked as though it would be heading into the city and causing trouble for all of the citizens. We never found out what happened to Charlotte or Randall, but I believe they were most likely deeply traumatized by what they saw, and were grateful for the fact that they managed to escape. I thought this episode was a really good one. It was a real viewing experience, and that's what I appreciated. It embodied elements of old-school style horror from the 70s and 80s, and the medium in which we got to experience that felt authentic. I would have loved it if it was in 4x3 aspect ratio, as I feel that would have really suited the tone and style of the episode. I felt drawn in to what I was watching due to the focus on space and room that the characters had to speak. There were lots of close-up shots, so it felt personal, and the ambiguity around what was going to happen and Lionel's true intentions had me constantly guessing. Whilst there have been similarities between previous episodes in this anthology, this one does definitely truly stand on its own and I commend it for being so different, as it served its purpose well and I believe achieved what it needed to. Whilst not being an episode that contained jump scares, a darkness, or a spirit that was lurking to claim a victim, this one invaded your mind and captured your attention, just like The Rock did to those who were invited to the Sandpiper house. Whilst this wasn't my favourite episode of the show, I would say that the approach that the episode took is something that puts it slightly higher up the ranking for me, because it was so different. This one probably sits halfway through my personal ranking, but I feel it could change. I'll release my entire ranking video once I've covered the final episode of the show. I'd recommend giving this one a watch. I imagine it's not going to be to everybody's taste as not a lot happens for six-eighths of the episode, but by the end of it, I feel it can be appreciated. I'm covering all of the episodes for this anthology over on my channel, so head over there to see the videos I've done on the previous episodes, or stick around to see my take on the final episode. So, there you have it. Cabinet of Curiosities Episode 7 The Viewing, Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.